Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just want to say while he's doing that, guys, um, when you see my card, I am playing pinball while drinking a beer, and I think that perfectly sums up our film for anyone who has seen it. And, and in that fashion, hold on one second, guys. Uh, anybody, if this movie, Token Taverns, is about arcade bars. It's about pinball. It's about classic arcade cabinet machines in an arcade environment. However, it's also a bar movie. So in perfect fashion, we're going to start this panel off proper and have our uh, beer fast or breakfast, whatever. Uh, it's early enough, guys. So I want to cheers Ralph for being here. I want to cheers Walter. Is he here? Is he meditating? Okay, there he is. I want to cheers you, and I want to cheer all you guys because uh, I truly made this movie for the community, and um, I'm super excited to be here and to show it tomorrow because showing it for you guys is like the perfect dream. So cheers to you guys. Cheers, Bob. Cheers. All right. I don't know if anybody else is drinking on our panels, but we, we are. Here, take this, Ralph. Um, go ahead and set up the frame. We'll play that part. Yeah, so, um, so has, has everyone seen the movie? Or Okay, all right. So if you haven't seen it, this is, that's good then because we're going to tee you up and play the trailer for everybody. Uh, Bob and I did a similar session like this at Southern Fried Gaming Expo in Atlanta. So, um, but I think the room is going to be, we're going to have a bigger audience here, which is awesome. Uh, but the reaction was great. It was cool for me because I have a small role in the movie, and uh, it was neat to see, because uh, I've worked with Bob and known Bob for a while now, but it was neat to see, like, actually collectors and people that are really into this uh, and th their reaction to the movie. So here's the trailer, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the movie. The bar arcade has always kind of been a thing. There are a huge number of arcade bars popping up all over the country. It's this new meeting ground for people. They're doing gangbuster business. We've been busy. We've been trying to keep beer stock. <laughs> it's nuts. Being able to experience this piece of our childhood, the whole nostalgia aspects of it, they just go so well together. Come on in, play the games, and have a beer, have whiskey. My preference whiskey. But, uh... <laughs> When I walked into my first arcade bar, I was just like almost in tears. I'm like, oh my God, someone gets me. You get to do something that you love and share it with a community that's incredibly supportive. 90s hip hop, beers and video games. You're doing good work. You can't have a business like this and not be passionate about it. Play the game with the owner of this place and he can destroy me. I might leave that in the Yelp review. Only in 2020, Stormy Daniels is coming in a reboot. Donald Trump's favorite character in Mario Kart was Toad. I'm triggered. I'm leaving. I was like, oh my god, this guy's got wrestling too in this place. If you want to play, like maybe we'll wager like tonight's tab on. Sweating. <laughs> The connection that goes beyond the physical game. If it wasn't for this place, I wouldn't be who I am today. I never thought it would become a spot where people love it as much as they do. We're just a friendly neighborhood arcade bar. Token Taverns! Boom shakalaka! Alright guys, that gives you a little taste of, the, of what the movie is like. Um, uh, I'm not sure how much information you guys know. I'll give you a little bit of information. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it kind of uh, short today, give you guys really time for Q&A, because I'd love to hear any questions you might have. Um, but the movie really centers on three uh, arcade bars that I followed over two years and followed their story. And what it does is it tells this parallel story that anybody that owns an arcade bar um, or has been in an arcade bar can, can relate to. Um, so there's that component. And then there's the component of, of people like Walter, Tim Kidsrow, Billy Mitchell, some of these people from arcade history and who are in um, the scene now, uh, Retro Ralph here as well, um, to kind of chime in on arcade bars as a whole. So it's kind of mixing those two ideas, the idea of a complete story and, and these uh, kind of people who are, I would say, experts in the field uh, who are kind of commenting on arcades as a whole. Uh, what are they? Uh, what is the future? Um, pinball. Pinball is, there's a section of pinball with these guys. Um, and, and we also have a, a, our own little 80s section 
about uh, the explosion of arcades and, and the downfall and how that kind of leads to arcade bars. Um, I started this film not really knowing exactly what I was going to do specifically, and that's how this is my third uh, film. And that's kind of how I always start. I start with an idea, and then I grab a camera, and I start filming, and the story will present itself, and, um, and I kind of go from there. And, um, and, you know, I did plan to go all around the nation. If, if anyone's wondering, like, why didn't you come here? Why didn't you go there? Well, I definitely intended to. But we had this thing called COVID-19 that happened. And uh, I, got, I shot about a third of the film, and then that's when COVID kind of came into play. And so then I pivoted and, uh, and really kind of uh, hunkered down, for lack of a better word, and, and stuck to Tampa because there was no other option. And, and because of that, I feel like it was a happy accident in the filmmaking side of things because I really invested time with these people. So what you get is you really get a, a movie story that's a documentary, but in my way, I try to play it as much as like a, a narrative film that you would watch. So you get to know these characters, you get to know the bar flies, the, the people who are playing. There's multiple pinball tournaments um, in the movie. Pinball is a, a huge factor in the movie as well. Um, but while we're seeing this, we're also talking about community, and I think that's probably the biggest factor, right? Yeah, I think that was the thing that, that I was most excited for. I got into pinball only about three years ago, but it was interesting because, um, you know, at that time, I, I was like, wow, these things are super expensive. Like, I'm not going to buy a pinball. I was like, what? Like I, like, I thought, I was like, six grand? Like, at the time, I think it was like Stranger Things had just came out, and it was like six grand. And I was like, that's, that, that can't be six grand. That just can't be the right price, right? Maybe that's like the super ultra premium one. But then come to find out, or the limited edition, I guess, uh, come to find out, I'm like, wow, well, where can I like go play these things? So someone's like, oh, have you ever checked out this website? It'll tell you where there's barcade locations. And like, I had gone to arcade bars, but I didn't really seek out like the ones that had pinball machines. And I started to kind of like, oh, wow, there's like some really cool places. And the thing that I think hit me about the movie the most and what you captured in it is... Uh, is there's really cool communities that are built at these places and they become more than just about the games. Like people, they repeat, go there, they see their friends that like, if you look electric bats here in the audience, like they do pinball tournaments all the time. There's people that become really good friends. And so like, it's that you do, it really does build a sense of community and it comes out in the movie. And you know, there's, there's the unfortunate part is that when, and I think it actually made the movie better, but when, um, when COVID happened, it's like you're seeing the effect on not only the businesses, like how they survived, but how the people were affected by the fact that they're, this piece of the community, this thing that made them so happy that they could get joy from, was like ripped away from them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. kind of. And, and you know, I, I think what it did, if, if, there were, if, if COVID wasn't a part of this, let's say I filmed it f three or four years ago. Well, first off, arcade bars wouldn't be as big, but. Um, the, it really brought emotional weight to it. So yes, these communities were there and you see it, but when, when they're not allowed to be around each other and they're not allowed to play pinball and there are no pinball tournaments, the community expressed how much they missed that. And I think there's definitely a thing that we all can relate to is sometimes you, you don't know what you have until it's gone. And, and, and also, I think this resonates in the film as well, is how much it's important to play games of any kind, you know, like, yes, it, in the whole scheme of things, like, how important is that, but to your soul and to, your, you know, to, to, to yourself and kind of to keep moving forward, games are a part of, of everybody's life in some sort of way, and I think that that kind of showed, um, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a joy to film, I mean, I will tell you, my wife, the film, when you see it, I feel like it's got a nice polished look, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, but Behind the camera, it was myself and my wife, um, and we kind of, I filmed that little camera back there. That's what I'm filming with, with little mics, and, and we kind of disappear in the background. So you really kind of feel like you're hanging out at the bar, and um, I'll say probably 85, 90% of this movie is inside an arcade bar. Um, very little is even outside of the walls uh, of an arcade bar, and it definitely kind of merges that line between arcade and Cheers. You know, if you haven't heard it, our tagline is where everybody knows your game. And, and that's really true about this film. It's like the conversations you'll hear at the bar are, are really fun conversations that you won't hear anywhere else except for an arcade bar. Talk about the new game or pinball or maybe D&D. &D. 
um, but they're still sharing it over a craft beer in, in front of a bar, which yeah, is... It's, it's like being here. It's like when you're at Expo, you know that you can talk about all the geeky stuff that if you talk to, like, maybe your friends outside of your circle or at work, they're like, yeah, cool, I don't know anything about uh, what you're saying. So <laughs> you're like, oh, man, the solenoid broke. They're like, cool, uh, what? <laughs> like, what are you even talking about? So it's cool. Like, it, it does have that sense of you're around people. You get it, you get to hear a lot of those conversations, sort of. You, you, f you do kind of get the sense that you're at the arcade bar, which is really cool. Um, I don't know. I love. I love the my my favorite part of the movie, or my favorite like feeling from the movie, is the community part because that's why you're here at Expo, and I think that's why people go to these arcade bars. I mean, of course, people go to drink beer, and a lot of them have sort of rallied around the idea of having like craft beers or really good drinks and cocktails. But the community part, I think, is so huge, and it's it's definitely captured in the movie. Yeah, and you know, let's just talk about we are at Pinball Expo, so let's just center this into a little bit of pinball talk here. Um, we filmed the movie from kind of the end of 2019 to almost the beginning of 2022. And a lot of that was because of COVID, because don't get me wrong, guys, this is not a COVID movie. Like uh, the first third of the movie, we're just getting to know people, and then, and then you'll get a hurdle from COVID. And I kept, I even stopped filming for a bit and waited so that we could kind of come out the other side. But in that period of time, you guys are going to get to kind of look back on some things in pinball. I mean, there's, there are... A very integral scenes to the movie that in the background center around the fact that uh, Turtles came out or Avengers came out or Godzilla when they had the first Stern Insider Connect and oh wow they're thousand dollars more now like these are scenes in, in, in the movie um, which I think will be cool for you guys to kind of like think back on that um, and seeing it from their perspective which is kind of cool and there's a lot of Easter eggs Oh, yeah, in, in the yeah. movie <laughs> as well, and a lot of cool. I like I like the lineup. I get it. I've seen the movie a thousand times now, um, so many times uh, on Blu-ray and VHS um, that uh, I now like look at the machines, and I'm like really proud of some of the machines that are just in the background, I like the older pens. And I mean, I'll give you guys a, a little tidbit of how how I fell into pinball was through this movie. I was in the community. I went to an arcade bar. I play. I didn't play pinball. I played arcade games. Well, when we start, hey, give me, give me time here. <laughs> I just started. I had just started going there, but I had the idea to do the movie through my love of craft beer, and through because I started going to these places instead of craft beer bars when I travel. It became my new thing. I used to go to craft beer bars when I, the local thing to do, uh, and then these popped up, and it gave me the local craft beer, and then the games. So that's why I decided to make a movie that I could make a video game or arcade type movie and then also a beer movie at the same time. That was the original idea. So while I was filming and COVID happened, I couldn't film anything. And you'll see this in the movie. Um, everything's shut down, they start renting out machines and I can't film anything and I can't do anything and I don't know what to do when I can't work. So I had the idea of I'm gonna rent a machine from one of the bars that at Parquet that we film at and he didn't want to film with me at the time because of COVID. Like, I, you can't even be around me, right? Everybody's skittish. So I rented a Last Action Hero, and I said, well, he's coming to my house. I'm going to film. I can film all I want. <laughs> and it's very well covered because I probably had three cameras <laughs> in my house just so eager to film. And you'll see him roll that Last Action Hero into my house, and that was the machine that really set it off for me. Me and my wife stayed up till 1, 1 30 every night drinking beer, playing Last Action, Last Action Hero. And that's been it for me. I'm on my fourth pinball machine. It's in my edit desk. Avengers right next to it. And uh, I'm hooked. That's, that's all me and my wife do now. Um, so that was kind of this film brought me into the pinball community. And, and I'm, I'm here to stay now. So that's just a little... Like, and, and it, Ralph, you kind of fell in around the same time, too, right? Yeah, and everyone, guy. it was at an expo. Well, the, where it kind of really snowballed was at my first expo. It was the first expo, I think, back from from COVID and someone, I, everyone kept saying, especially my buddy Arcade Hollywood, he was like, they multiply, be careful, they multiply. And I'm like, there's too expensive to multiply. And then I found myself like selling anything that wasn't nailed down to my house <laughs> to get a pinball machine. I was, it's, but it's just, I don't know that, and I'm a like traditional video game guy. So it was just, I think it's the variability of it and how like, even though it's the same game, it's always kind of different. I, I just, I fell in love with it. I love it and I love that there's so much pop culture inside pinball like it, you go through the decades and you're like wow they've they've captured all these cool moments that maybe a movie you liked or a musician you know elton john right there it's like i don't know it's just a cool 
I don't know how I wasn't in it before. I kind of feel I wish I could build a time machine and go back and experience some of the stuff I didn't. But uh, but I'm I'm grateful that I'm in it now. And and uh, the movie kind of, you know, the movie just spearheaded that even more because you do see a lot of the movie's good. I think if you're a casual person, and it's also good if you're like a collector or a hardcore pinhead too, because you have a bunch of like there are Easter eggs, whether they were intentional or not. There's always something cool yeah. in there to see. So. All right. like it. I want to open this up for Q&A, but first off, for anyone who hasn't been by the booth or, or knows, um, for the first time ever, uh, well, first off, we are on Amazon Prime, so if you guys scan that QR code, even for purposes of when you go home, we're streaming on Amazon now. Um, for the first time ever, we have our Blu-rays. They literally just got printed last week. Um, my distributor told me that these aren't going to be available on Amazon for 60 days, so I have my own du uh, duplication made. And we're selling them exclusive here to Expo. And I will tell you, yesterday I sold over half. Um, we're, and, and I also have about 18 uh, VHSs that I made myself. Uh, they have FBI warnings. They have the please be kind, do not re rewind sticker as well. Um, it's just a cool little art piece. But I will tell you guys, if you're thinking about getting the Blu-ray, I would suggest you do it today. I don't see it lasting. By the time the screen comes, they should be gone. Um, and uh, it's just really exciting. I, I really pushed it out because I was like, uh, you know, you guys are the the uh, the target audience as niche as it can be. So they're, they're both $20 a piece. I have T-shirts as well. If any of you guys want a poster when we leave, I, I've got some posters up here for you guys as well. But let's uh, open up some questions which you, might, you guys might have. Yes. Okay, I'll tell you exactly what the game plan is, and, and it goes um, kind of into that. Aside from Token Taverns 2, which is definitely a thought, but I think the way that I'm, uh, okay, so first off, my day job uh, that I do, um, when like this is my passion project, side hustle, but I do work in film and television and documentary, uh, docu-series and reality TV. So where I'm pushing next is I'm going to repurpose uh, the movie into a sizzle reel for Token Taverns, the series. And this, for all you arcade bar owners, really comes into play because in that sense, it's like episode one might be Phoenix, and, and it's you guys, or it's you guys in another arcade bar that's in, in the city. Uh, the next one would be Chicago, and, and maybe just one or two bars, and we kind of switch back and forth between those. Uh, I used to uh, produce a series called, for MTV called True Life, and if you ever saw that, they always have kind of two stories, and you kind of go back and forth throughout the episode. Um, so I have an idea for that, and I do work in the field where I, I work for, I was, I'm starting a show on Monday, where I can actually pitch that out to people. So I'm thinking on that, and even if that doesn't work out, because I think what's great about that is that means I cannot pick two or three, because I think it's important not to dilute it. Like if I had a ran around, my last film, Instaban, I had like, it was about the music industry, I had like nine, ten artists, and it was diluted, and it just didn't have as much heart. I think you got to get to know the characters. So with a series, everybody gets a moment, and if it go does well, then we just continue to do it. You can always do another episode. So that is the game plan. My goal is to be able to show some of the people who I work with the success of Token Taverns and what myself and my wife have just done with just the two of us to see what would be possible with a real budget and a full crew and, and more than just sweat equity, which is that that's what this film, this film is made with thousands of my hours and sweat equity. So yeah, that's, that's the game plan. And if for you guys too, you will see like Electric Bat included that even though it is sitting around three bars, um, even after COVID kind of opened up and I started traveling again, every time I stepped into an arcade bar, I shot footage and I used that B-roll in the movie. So you will see a lot of places, Electric Bat included in, in the movie for, you know, B-roll purposes. Not, maybe not as story much, but every time somebody's talking about uh, arcade bars in general, I call it generically, you know, like, the, like Walter, these guys, then I use a, a different bar. I didn't use our main three. I just kept them with their stories. So you'll see a lot of little places it there. Was, it was interesting that that scene, there are, there's a couple little moments, if you've been to Electric Bat, that are in the, that are in the movie, but that was actually him and I just hanging out. And, I, yeah. And he goes, I might try to, like, you actually had the edit sort of done. But the movie was done, or one cut, director's cut was done. Yeah. 
and and that was like for six months before I delivered. And I just kept, I caught tinkering. I just kept adding and adding. I was in Phoenix working Super Bowl, and I linked up with, with Ralph, and we met at Electric Bat. So I, anytime I go into an arcade bar, I always have my camera. And so, yeah, we got footage. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, and that was, what, January, February, February. I think it's February. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, any more questions, guys? Nobody's, nobody's going to ask why Stormy Daniels in the movie? I mean... <laughs> Nobody's going to have a Billy question? I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that because, uh, you know, that she's – I believe in, in the one strange cameo in every movie. Like, so I did a CrossFit movie for my first film called Functional Fitness, and uh, it's got Jimmy Hart from wrestling in it. Really? <laughs> yeah, he's in a cameo. He was just – at least he kind of fall on your lap. But, yeah, Stormy Daniels, uh, she comes around Tampa quite a bit. I, I do – I have known her for a while. But she ended up coming to Reboot uh, because her assistant, um, had, he, he came to us. He, I took him there, and he told her about it. So she came to check the place out. And so the funny thing about that is uh, when that happened, I just uh, I called George, and I, th that's the owner of Reboot, and said, hey, listen, um, Stormy Daniels is going to come out of your place. And he's like, Stormy Daniels is going to come to the pl and he's like he didn't want to believe me but then he was like well the last time he called he told me Billy Mitchell was showing up and he came so I guess Stormy's coming and so but that's all I did I put a mic on him I put a mic on her and she walked through and he gave her like a little tour and you'll see in the movie it's just a fun little cameo by the way I did Same. get some heat for the fact that in the opening credits you have her name right next to mine so like completely my, I, intentional. I had friends of mine screenshotting it and sending it to my wife being like what is this movie about exactly I'm like cool <laughs> so thanks for that Oh, uh, yeah, I did that for, for your wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she loved it. Um, but, yeah, you know, I mean, if if someone like Stormy Daniels walks into your arcade bar and you film it, do you not put that on? I mean, do you not use that? <laughs> I, well, there, and there's some surprises in there about um, her. She might be a little bit more geeky than you'd think. I was surprised. There's some things in there that, that I was shocked by. Right. But, um, yeah, she's a nerd, I think. Yeah, and I will <laughs> tell you, even though no one asked, I will tell you guys how, how Billy did come into the picture. Um, is uh, one of the bars we filmed that was called Glitch in Fort Lauderdale, and they they their kind of focus in there was indie games, and um, and so the guy told me that Billy Mitchell's actually comes there and he 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 live streams, uh, his Pac Man's and stuff like that. So he kind of fell into the film through yeah. the bar, which was kind of cool. Is our time up? Yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, let me name all the YouTubers that I thought of before we got to Ralph. I don't want to know that. <laughs> no, we just need to get us out of choice, man. <laughs> no, Ralph was Ralph was my first pick. Honestly, I'll, I'll finish this up real quick. Um, uh, I before I even came up with the idea for the film, I was into the home arcade scene, and I was watching Ralph's videos, and and and, and I wanted to kind of include home gaming as much as I could in something that's not about home gaming. So including him. Plus, he's super great on camera, and he's got a radio voice. I mean, Thank you. yeah, and trust me, I, know, I, I recognize a radio voice. So, yeah, that's how, how Ralph and, – and last thing, me and Ralph did his interview remotely, so he, I wasn't even with him. He filmed it himself, and I interviewed him via FaceTime. Which is so cool. I was looking, so the, to get that side profile shot that you see, I am looking at him, but I'm looking at him on, like, my cam, my phone is right here. <laughs> so, like, the the shot looks like I'm talking to someone, but I'm really just, it's Bob's face on the phone. Being like, yeah, that, that's good, Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you guys aren't tired of us and you really need more of me and Ralph talking, which I know you do, definitely get the Blu-ray because we do the director's commentary, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, we did it all in one take, and we did that remote as well. So that's we're 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 the director's I commentary will say on the Blu-ray. If you were gonna have a drinking game for the commentary, I don't know what it is. I say the word "neat" an awful <laughs> lot, and my wife's like, "What's up with you saying neat a lot?" And I was like, "I don't really say that word. I said neat like a million times." So you'll be wasted by the time. The <laughs> Thank you guys <laughs> all for coming. Um, uh, the the show the movie is gonna play at 7:15 tomorrow. Um, so definitely come and see it because I will tell you there's no better way to watch it with with a communal experience in this group when we screened it so Southern Fried Gaming it's just yeah. it just gets no better because everybody gets it um, I do have my Blu-rays and stuff here I'll be right outside the door if anybody wants to get anything here otherwise I'll be uh, uh, back at the table if anybody is uh, wants to get anything today and thank you guys so much for coming Thanks, man. Everybody.